Sanjay Kumar. He completed his BE Civil Engineering from Madurai Kamaraj University. He also pursued his ME Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering from Anna University, Chennai. He worked as a designer engineer for one year under a structural consultant in Madurai. He is currently working as a faculty member in the Department of Civil Engineering, Thiagarajar College of Engineering, Madurai. He has organized two national conferences at TCE in 2010 and 2014. He's also got three publications in international journals. He is an A-lead member for the Geotechnical Consultancy at Thiagarajar College of Engineering. Welcome to UGC lecture series for architecture. The subject name is Mechanics of Structures 1 and we are in Unit 4 which is elastic properties of solids. This is lecture number 10. We shall see the contents of this lecture. First of all, we will be seeing the meaning of section modulus and radius of gyration, which is the part of the previous unit. Then we will be seeing elastic limit of an object, definition of stress and strain, Hooke's law, stress strain plot for mild steel and stress strain plot for concrete. Section modulus, it is denoted by the alphabet capital Z. It is the ratio of moment of inertia of the section about its centroidal axis and the extreme fiber distance from its center of gravity, center of gravity or centroidal axis. Now, let us consider a rectangular section of width B and depth equal to D. Now, this is the CG of the rectangular section. The broken line indicates the horizontal centroidal axis passing through the CG. Now, according to the definition, section modulus is the ratio of moment of inertia of the given section about its centroidal axis to the extreme fiber distance from the centroidal axis. Here, I is the moment of inertia of the section about its centroidal axis, Y max is. extreme fiber distance. Now, for a rectangular section, we know the value of i x x. i x x is b into d cube by 12. Now, with respect to the centroidal x x axis, extreme fibers are the topmost fiber. So, this is the topmost fiber and the bottommost fiber. Distance of the extreme fibers from the centroidal axis, x x axis will be, so this will be d by 2 and also this distance distance of bottommost fiber will also be d by 2. So, for a rectangular section, the extreme fiber distance y max will be equal to d by 2. Hence, if you calculate the section modulus with respect to x x axis, it will be i x x by y max. So, b into d cube by 12, this divided by y max, y max is d by 2. So, you will get 2 by d here. So, z x x will be b into d square by 6. So, this is z x x. In the same manner, if you calculate z y y, it will be equal to d into b square by 6. Likewise, you can calculate section modulus for square and also for circular section. Radius of gyration is indicated by the alphabet small r. It is given by this equation square root of i by a, where i is the moment of inertia of the section about its centroidal axis and capital A is the area of the section. Its unit will be in centimeter, meter or millimeter. Now, we shall see the meaning of elastic limit of an object. When a body is subjected to an external force, it undergoes some deformation, but the molecules of the body offers some resistance against this deformation. Once if the external force is removed, the body will come back to its original position. But this is possible if the force or stress which is causing the deformation is only within certain limit. This limit is known as elastic limit. So, naturally if the load or stress exceeds elastic limit, then the body will undergo permanent deformation. The material cannot withstand that much resistance to bring back to its original shape. On the other hand, if the applied load or stress is within elastic limit, the material can regain or it can come back to its original shape. So, once when the material is loaded beyond elastic limit, there will be permanent deformation. So, it will become a plastic one. 
plastic material. On the other hand, if the material is loaded within elastic limit, it will have the full elastic property, it will regain its original shape and form. Now, we shall see the definition of stress. In most of the engineering books, stress will be denoted by the alphabet small p. It is the ratio of the applied force to the cross section area of an object or we can also call it as the ratio of the resistance offered per unit cross section area where p is the applied force or it will be equal to the internal resistance. In SI system, unit of stress will be in Newton per mm square. Stress can be either compressive in nature or tensile in nature depending upon the nature of applied force. Now, consider a bar like this. If it is acted upon by a pulling force or a tensile force, then the induced stress will be tensile stress. If the same object is acted upon by a pushing force or a compressive force like this, then the stress induced will be compressive in nature. So, depending upon the nature of force, stress can be either compressive or tensile. Strain, strain is indicated by the symbol epsilon. It is the ratio of change in length or deformation to the original length of the object. Epsilon is equal to delta L by L naught, where delta L is the deformation or change in length, L naught is the original length of the specimen. So, it is a unitless quantity. Now, we shall see Hooke's law. When a material is loaded within elastic limit, the stress is directly proportional to the strain induced. This is the statement for Hooke's law. Stress small p will be proportional to the induced strain or the ratio of stress to strain will be a constant. This constant is indicated by capital E, where E is called as modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus of the material. Stress small p divided by strain is Young's modulus of elasticity capital E, but the strain will be change in length or this is deformation divided by original length L naught which will be equal to E. The stress is replaced by load capital P load or force divided by cross section area of the specimen this divided by delta L by L naught which is equal to strain E. From this if we want to calculate the deformation delta L, delta L will be P into L naught divided by A E, A into capital E, where P is the applied force, L naught is the original length of the specimen, A is the cross section area of the specimen and capital E is the modulus of elasticity of the given material. Mostly we will be using this equation for calculating deformation in a elastic material. Now, we shall see the stress strain plot for a mild steel. Now, stress strain plot for a mild steel specimen is obtained by conducting a tensile test on a steel rod, mild steel rod using a universal testing machine. In the universal testing machine, the steel rod will be mounted and then axial tensile force will be applied to the steel rod specimen. Now, if the axial tensile force is increased, if it is increased, then it will undergo deformation. So, they will be measuring the applied axial force versus the corresponding deformation. The applied stress will be plotted in y axis, stress is nothing but load by area, tensile force by area of the steel rod specimen and the strain will be plotted in x axis which is change in length divided by original length. Original length will be the gauge length. The plot will be like this. Now, the salient points of the stress strain plot are shown as A, B, C, D, M and F. Now, the point A is known as limit of proportionality, 
limit of proportionality points B and C are known as yield points yield points in between the portion C D the material will be behaving in a ductile manner. So, we can call the portion C D to be ductile stage point M is known as ultimate stress point ultimate stress point or maximum stress point point f is known as breaking point or you can also call it as failure point now if you see if you see the stress strain plot initially in the portion oa the variation between stress and strain or stress strain relationship will be linear so oa will be a straight line point A is known as limit of proportionality, elastic limit will be slightly above point A, but for most of the materials elastic limit and limit of proportionality will coincide. So, elastic limit will be almost same as limit of proportionality, so it will coincide with point A. Young's modulus of elasticity of any material is the ratio of stress to strain. So, for mild steel specimen if you want to get the modulus of elasticity we will be finding out the slope of this particular portion O A. So, this is d y, d y will be the stress value which is small p and this is d x, d x will be strain. So, the ratio of stress to strain will give you the Young's modulus of elasticity. This ratio should be obtained in the portion O A in order to obtain the Young's modulus of elasticity of the sealed rod. Now, points B and C are known as yield points, B is upper yield point and C is known as lower yield point. If you see the curve between B and C there will be large amount of deformation taking place even without any stress increase that is even without any load increment between B and C the material starts to yield at a rapid rate that is deformation will be very very large. Portion C D is known as ductile portion or ductile stage in which the material will behave like a ductile material that is the area of cross section of the steel rod will start to reduce along with the deformation. Point M refers to ultimate stress point. So, at this particular stage the steel has reached its ultimate strength. Beyond M if you see the deformation will take place even if the load is decreased or even if the stress is decreased that is the stress will start to decrease from M it will start to decrease like this, but the deformation or elongation will be keeping on increasing. Finally, at the stress corresponding to point F the material will fail or material will break. So, from M to F there will be formation of neck. So, if this is the steel rod neck formation you can observe the formation of neck or waist. So, between M and F we can observe the formation of neck and finally, at point F the material will fail. Now, if you draw this restrain plot for a high strength steel it will be almost like this except for high strength steel you would not observe well defined failure points like B and C. So, for a high strength steel well defined yield points will not be there for high strength steel. Now, we shall see this restrain plot for a concrete. Now, for obtaining this restrain plot for concrete first of all we should form a concrete cube of dimension 15 centimeter cross 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter in a mold after doing the mixed proportion the concrete should be casted in a mold of dimension 15 by 15 by 15 centimeter. The concrete should be cured for a period of 28 days by immersing the mold along with the concrete in water. After a period of 28 days of curing this concrete specimen will be tested in a compression testing machine. Steel rod will be tested in a tensile testing machine or UTM here it will be tested in a compression testing machine. So, in a compression testing machine axial compressive force will be applied. This axial compressive force will be kept on increasing and then the deformation will be measured 
using the value of applied axial compressive force and the deformation measured stress strain plot will be plotted. Stress small p will be taken in y axis and the strain will be plotted in x axis. Now, if you see this shape of this stress strain plot, it will be almost curvilinear except for the initial portion a b. So, the stress strain plot will be a straight line for the initial small portion a b. Beyond point b, the relationship between the stress p and the strain epsilon will not be a linear one, it will be a curvilinear one. This is due to the fact that there will be formation of fine cracks within the concrete cube. So, beyond point B, there will be formation of fine fractures or cracks within the concrete cube and hence the relationship between stress and strain would not be linear one. So, A B will be the linear portion, a small linear portion m is the maximum stress point and f is the failure point. This maximum stress for most of the concrete specimen will occur at a strain of 0.2 percentage, 0.2 percentage will be 0.002 and the failure will occur at a strain ranging between 0.003 to 0.004. So, failure point will be attained at a strain rate varying between 0.3 percentage to 0.4 percentage. So, stress corresponding to point m is maximum compressive stress. So, this p max is maximum compressive stress or this will be called as the ultimate compressive strength of the concrete cube, ultimate compressive strength of the concrete cube. Likewise, for the steel rod also, the stress corresponding to the point M will be the maximum tensile stress, which will be the ultimate tensile strength, ultimate tensile strength of the steel rod. So, P max here for the concrete cube is the maximum compressive stress or ultimate compressive strength of the concrete. In order to get the Young's modulus of elasticity of the concrete, we should take the slope of the curve within the portion of 0.45 P max. So, this point will correspond to 0.45 p max. So, Young's modulus of elasticity is the ratio of stress to strain within this particular portion. So, if we take this as x, we should take the slope of this particular portion between a and x. So, this is stress and this is strain. So, stress divided by strain will give the Young's modulus of elasticity of the concrete cube. Now, we shall see an example problem for calculating stress, strain and deformation. A mild steel rod is 25 mm in diameter and 200 centimeter long. The rod is subjected to a axial pull of 50 kilo Newton. Find number 1 the intensity of stress, number 2 strain and number 3 elongation. Take capital E equal to 2 into 10 power 5 Newton per millimeter square. Now, first of all we shall calculate the value of stress. Now, the mild steel rod is subjected to a axial pull, hence the nature of stress will be tensile. So, stress is denoted by the alphabet small p, which is equal to load capital P divided by cross section area of the specimen. Load here is given as 50 kilo Newton. So, 50, we are converting this kilo Newton into Newton. So, into 10 power 3, 1 kilo Newton is equal to 1000 Newton or 10 power 3 Newton. So, load is 50 into 10 power 3 Newton. So, this is substituted in Newton divided by cross section area. The diameter of the rod is given as 25 mm and the length of the rod 
200 centimeter. So, cross section area of the rod is pi by 4 into diameter square pi by 4 into 25 square. So, the denominator will be in millimeter square. So, if we do the calculation the stress will be 101.86 Newton per millimeter square. Next we are asked to calculate the value of strain. Strain is epsilon. We know that the ratio of stress to strain is Young's modulus of elasticity. Now, we need the value of strain. So, strain will be equal to stress small p divided by Young's modulus of elasticity. Stress is calculated as 101.86, this is a Newton per millimeter square divided by Young's modulus of elasticity. Young's modulus of elasticity of the rod is given as 2 into 10 power 5, this is also in Newton per mm square. Always we should check whether we have used appropriate units. The numerator and denominator here should have same units, it should be substituted in same units. So, strain will be computed as 5.09 into 10 power minus 4, it does not have any unit. Finally, we shall calculate the value of elongation. Elongation is the deformation, the rod elongates because the applied force is tensile in nature. Elongation is delta L, delta L by L naught will be the strain. So, therefore, the elongation delta L will be strain into the initial length, initial length L naught. Strain is 5.09 into 10 power 4 into initial length, initial length of the rod is 200 centimeter. So, into 200 or we shall substitute in terms of millimeters, it will be in 2000 millimeters. So, delta L will come as 1.02 millimeter. To summarize the things which we have learned in this lecture, we have seen the meaning of section modulus and radius of gyration. Then we have seen the meaning of elastic limit, definition for stress and strain. Next we have seen Hooke's law and finally, we have seen the stress strain plot for mild steel as well as concrete. Students can try to answer the following questions. Define stress and strain. State Hooke's law and mention its validity. Explain the salient features of the stress strain plot for a mild steel rod. With this we have come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.